So whether you're a homeschooling parent, an onschooling parent, or just a parent that's concerned about their child's education and you want to help them through the transition from pre-algebra to Algebra 1, we're going to go over one of the stumbling blocks that usually happens in the beginning of that journey. So when kids go from pre-algebra to Algebra 1, the first thing that they run into that gives them trouble oftentimes is adding and subtracting negative numbers. Sometimes we call this integers, okay? So dealing with integers. Today we're going to work on adding integers or adding negative numbers. What I want to do here is show you a little trick, show you something that you can use all throughout uh, your education through math. All throughout learning math you can use this. What we're going to do really is we're going to catalog all the permutations that, that can happen while using adding negative numbers. Okay, and again, you can use this with anything. A lot of times when people are intimidated by math, it's because there are so many um, different variations and permutations. But one of the ways to deal with that is to not just wait until you see that permutation on the test or on a piece of homework, but it's to write it down, get familiar with all the different ways things can be ordered and structured so you know how to approach them in the end. And what I'm going to show you later is how you can take this and then you condense it down, you know, write it, write it in a little block on the side on a piece of paper um, on your test or on your homework so you can use it as a guide or reference when you're doing your work. So the first one's very simple. A, that's just one plus two. Again, we're using very simple numbers because at this point, once you're going into algebra, algebra one, algebra two, you're going into calculus, whatever it is. The numbers aren't what trip you up anymore in mathematics. It's usually now the operations. It's getting the operations in order and doing the operations properly and doing the operations in, in sequence so you get the right answer. But it's not the numbers that trip us up. So the, the value of the numbers is pretty much irrelevant. So we're just going to use simple numbers here. 1 plus 2 is 3. Now we have negative 1 plus 2. What do we do when we add by a negative number? Well, we subtract and we keep the sign of the larger number. The larger number in this case is two. So if we subtract one and two, we get one. And it's gonna stay a positive one because two is the larger number. Okay, how about C? One plus negative two, right? You see now I have the same numbers. The only thing I did here, the only difference between B and C is I switched the negative sign. So now the negative sign belongs to the two and not the one. Let's see if that changes anything. How do, we, how do we deal with this when we have two signs next to each other? Usually this is gonna be written in parentheses. This is the reason why the parentheses are there is because we have two signs. We have a positive sign and a negative sign close to each other. If we've uh, crossed this bridge yet or remember this or have been exposed to this, we know that the negative sign trumps the positive sign. So, one plus negative two really is one minus two. And one minus two is gonna give us negative one. Why is it gonna give us negative one? Because the number in front is smaller than the number we're subtracting by. If the number in front is smaller than the one that we're subtracting by, it's gonna give us a negative result. D, we have negative one plus negative two. Now this doesn't have to be written like this. You might see it like that. And of course, like I said in the last uh, example, this one is typically going to have the parentheses because there's two signs there. But I'll show you why I had those parentheses there. The reason why I had those parentheses there is because it kind of illustrates this to us very clearly how to deal with this kind of problem. How we're going to deal with this kind of problem is we're actually just going to add. So if you put those parentheses there, it kind of illustrates exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to add the, the two numbers. What's one and two? One plus two is three. Now, what do we do with the negative? Well, we actually just keep the negative. That's all we do. You just keep the negative when you add two negative numbers. So here we have all the permutations of adding um, the negative numbers. Now, what would, what would you do on a test or something like that? Well, I would get in the corner. If I was having difficulty with such a thing, and just write it down. 
have a little table for yourself. So when you're doing your test and you might get confused, you have a little table, you have a little piece of reference. And again, once you have experience with this, once you've done it enough times, you're not going to need to do that, but you have to give yourself aids and that's okay. See, a lot of times doing mathematics, people put too much pressure on themselves and feel like they have to know everything or everything has to be intuitive. Not everything in math is intuitive and you shouldn't know something that you haven't learned yet. So take the pressure off. Learn how to take some notes, write some notes on your, on, your, on your test, on your homework to make sure you get the right answer every time. We'll do a follow-up video soon on how to subtract by negative numbers.